In this video tutorial, I'll be looking at 2.2 which represents Chapter 2, Section 2 of the Pearson A-Level Maths Pure Maths Year 2 textbook. The topic that we'll be looking at is functions and mappings. So first of all, a mapping transforms one set of numbers into a different set of numbers. Question number one. Draw a mapping diagram for the following operation. Add 3 on the set minus 3, 1, 4, 6, x. When we draw a mapping diagram, the first particular diagram represents the set A and the set A is your set given. Okay, so over here I'm going to put down the elements of set A, which is this set here. So the elements are minus 3, 1, 4, 6 and x. Okay, now the operation that we're looking at is add 3. Okay, so now we're going to transform this particular set A into another set, which is set B. under the operation add 3. So minus 3 becomes 0 because minus 3 plus 3 is 0. Then we take 1 and we add 3 to it, we get 4 and so on. So 4 plus 3 is 7, 6 plus 3 is 9 and x plus 3 is x plus 3. And there you go, that completes the question. So I've drawn my mapping diagram. Okay, ladies and gents, we are now going to move on to the number system. The smallest number system is a set of natural numbers. We use the following symbol, that end symbol. The second smallest number system is a set of integers. We use the following notation, that Z symbol. The third smallest number system is the set of rational numbers. We use the following notation, that Q symbol. The fourth smallest number system is the set of real numbers. Okay, and we use the following notation, that R symbol. The largest number system is the set of complex numbers. And we use the following notation, that C symbol. Let's draw a diagram of the number systems. The smallest is the set of natural numbers. Then we have the set of integers, after which we have the set of rational numbers, then the set of real numbers, and finally the largest number system, which is the set of complex numbers. Okay, so that's a diagram of the number systems. Let's look at each number system in more depth. The first number system is a set of natural numbers. Now the set of natural numbers is just zero and positive whole numbers. So one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. The set of integers is just negative whole numbers, zero and positive whole numbers. So dot, 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 minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. The set of rational numbers is a set consisting of all numbers of the form A over B, such that A, B are elements of the set of integers. The set of real numbers consists of rational and irrational number. rational and irrational numbers. So, we know that a rational number is of the form a over b where a and b are elements of integers. Any number that can't be written in the form a over b where a and b are elements of integers are irrational numbers. For example, pi. Pi is an irrational number because it can't be written in the form a over b where a and b are integers. 
Right, now, complex numbers consist of numbers of the form a plus ib, such that a and b are elements of the real number set. Now, i is a complex number, and it is a number of the form square root minus 1. i is studied in further maths. You do not need to know i for A-level maths. Okay, so far we know what a mapping is, we know the different types of number systems. Now we're going to move on to what is a function. Okay, a function is a mapping which is either one-to-one. -one. Have a look at this mapping diagram. One, two, one. One, two, one. One, two, one. Or, number two, many to one. Many to one many to one okay now is this a function have a look at this mapping diagram let's focus on it okay in this case we have one to many one to many so this mapping diagram does not represent a function it is not a function Okay, it is not a function because it's not one to one and it is not many to one, it is one to many. Now, over here we have a function notation f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. The other way we can write this is as follows f colon x, okay, gets mapped to 2x plus 1. That's the other way in which we can write a function. And that completes what is a function. Okay people, we are mathematicians. We like to look at things in great detail. So, we know what a function is. Now we are going to look at the domain and range of a function. Have a look at this function over here. f of x equal 2x plus 1. The domain is just the x values that the function takes. And the range is just the y values that the function takes. And guys, you know the y, it represents f of x. Okay, so, over here we know what domain and range is, x values, y values, let's write a proper definition. The domain is just a set of x values that the function takes, okay, so let's write that down. Set of x values that the function takes. And the range, it is just the set of y values that the function takes. And that there is a brief explanation of domain and range of a function. Okay, not too bad, pretty straightforward. Okay people, we know what the domain of a function is, what the range of a function is. Let's have a look at some examples. I'm getting excited, maths is so juicy, so beautiful. Have a look at this beautiful sketch over here. I've got the graph y equal e to the power x. I want to find the domain of this particular function. The very first step is to look at the x-axis. We've got it here. Pick any x value, I'm going to pick this one over here. And then what you have to do is move vertically so that you can intersect the graph. I've intersected the graph over here. And then when I move across, I can see that this particular x value takes this y value. I'm going to repeat the same step but for another x value. Okay, so I'm going to pick this one here. What I can see in general is that x can be any real number. 
Therefore, for the domain, what I can write is x, e, r. x can be any real number. Let's have a look at the range. For the range, we need to focus on the y-axis. Pick any y-value. So, I'm going to pick this y-value over here. You need to move horizontally so that you intersect the graph. Move horizontally, intersect the graph here, you obtain this x-value. So that y-value takes on this x-value. In the same way, if I look at this y-value, move horizontally and intersect the graph, I can see that that y-value takes this x-value. Let's look at this y-value, move horizontally and intersect the graph. I see that that y-value takes on this x-value. However, now if I look at this y-value here, y equals 0, and I want to move horizontally, I see that I can't intersect the graph. So, for that particular y-value, we don't have any x-value. Let's look at this particular y-value. It's a negative y-value. If I move horizontally, I can't intersect the graph. So that negative y-value has no x-value. Okay? So, in general, I can conclude that y can be greater than 0. That is the range. So, y is a real number such that we have the restriction that y is greater than 0, people. y is greater than 0. The equation of the asymptote, well, the asymptote is just the x-axis, and the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. Okay, right, let's have a look at this graph in more depth. We want to try and conclude if it's a 1 to 1 function or a many to 1. Now, this x value gets mapped to that y value, this x value gets mapped to that y value, this x value gets mapped to that y value. So we see that it's a 1 to 1 function. Now let's move on to question number 2. For question number 2, I've got this beautiful graph over here. This is the graph y equal 1 over x, we call it the reciprocal graph. Let's first of all find the domain. To find the domain, you focus on the x-axis, pick any x-value, so I'm going to pick this x-value here. Move vertically so that you can intersect the graph. That x-value takes on that y-value. Repeat the process, I can pick this x-value now. Move vertically so that you intersect the graph. Intersect here. That x value takes on that y value. However, if I look at x equals 0 and I move vertically, I see that there will be no intersection with the graph. So x can't be 0. Let's look at the negative x values. Say I pick this one over here. Move vertically so that I intersect the graph. I see that that x value takes on this y value. Pick another negative x value, maybe this one here. Move vertically so that you intersect the graph. I see that this x value takes on this y value here. So, in general, I can conclude that for the domain, x can be positive or negative but can't be zero. So, x is a real number with the restriction that x cannot equal 0. That is the domain. Let's look at the range. Now people, for the range, like I said before in question number 1, we need to focus on the y-axis now. So if we look at the y-axis, pick a y-value, so I pick this y-value here. I see that I need to move horizontally. So moving horizontally so that I can intersect the graph, I intersect here. So that y value takes on this x value. In the same way, that y value takes on this x value. That y value takes on that x value. That y value takes on that x value. However, if I look at the origin over here, that y value there. 
and are moved horizontally. I see that there will be no intersection with the graph. So y cannot equal zero. And therefore I can conclude that y can be any positive value, any negative value apart from zero. So y is a real number with the restriction that y is not equal to zero. Okay, so we have the domain, we have the range. Now I want to work out the equation of the asymptote for this particular graph. Let's have a look at the graph. We have two asymptotes. We have the y-axis and the x-axis. For the y-axis, the equation is x equals zero. For the x-axis, the equation is y equals zero. Okay, so like we did in question number one, let's determine if this is a one-to-one -one or many-to-one -one function. Now, if you just look at the graph, you see that that x value gets mapped to that y value, that x value gets mapped to that y value. So each x value has a unique y value. Therefore, we have a one-to-one -one function. Let's move on to question number three. For question number three, we have this particular function. It is split into two parts, and therefore we call it a piecewise function. f of x is equal to this straight line graph, which is five minus two x, for x is less than one. f of x is equal to this quadratic graph here, which is x squared plus three, for x is greater than or equal to one. The very first part of the question is to sketch f of x. So let's do this, people. Here's my coordinate grid. The first step is to look at the inequalities. And look at the right-hand side of the inequality. We have the number 1 for both. Okay. So we start off with x value equal 1. Now, we put 1 into both parts of the function. Okay, so if we put 1 into the first part, which is 5 minus 2x, we get 3. I'm going to draw a circle which is not shaded. The reason why I do that is because there's no equal sign here. Okay? 5 minus 2x is a straight line with negative gradient and y-intercept 5. So here is my sketch. Okay, now I'm going to put x equal 1 into this quadratic. And if I do that, I get 4. x squared plus 3 is a positive quadratic. So I can sketch it like this. Okay. That's better. Now, what I need to decide is whether I shade the circle or not. Okay, let's go back to the function. There's an equal sign there, so you have to shade in this circle. Okay, that there is my sketch of f of x. All done, no problem. Let's move on to part b. Find the values of a such that f of a is equal to 90. Okay, now, f of a equal to 19 gives rise to two equations. The very first equation is 5 minus 2a is equal 19. So you replace the x over here with a, so 5 minus 2a equal 19. The second equation will be a squared plus 3 equal 19. You replace the x over here with a. So if we solve the equation over here, we obtain the solution a equal minus 7. And if we solve the equation over here, we obtain the solution a equal plus or minus 4. And that there, guys, completes the question. If you found this video tutorial useful, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and make sure you pass on the link to this YouTube channel to your family and friends. Peace.